Hello, Pray and Share Warriors. Oh, I forgot to turn my light on. It's very bright, so just give me a second here to get it down to a normal level. There we are. Alright, well I'm still learning and I'm so sorry that I am seven minutes late. Was watching something on YouTube and then I go, I'm supposed to be on YouTube <laughs> at seven. So, so sorry for the inconvenience. I hope that you had a great day today. I did. I got a lot accomplished today. It was a very great day. I really enjoyed today. I made me a list this morning and I worked my list. And those are my best days. Those are my most productive days are when I make a list first thing in the morning and that's what I do. Alright, well, I'm still trying to figure out where to put my eyes because it's really confusing. So I got two cameras going. I used to have them one on top of the other. It wasn't quite so hard. This one is farther back now. So anyway, it's all good. Well, tonight we are going to do Psalm 74 and 75. And um, then we're going to do a salvation message. My name is Charm. This is my ministry where I feel like God has called me to come and share His truths out of his word, not my truth, but his, and the gospel message, the gospel of Jesus. And I choose several different ways to do it. Um, I have different tracks that I use to do it with. We'll see where the Holy Spirit leads me tonight. I am going to go ahead and pray. God, we just thank you for tonight. We just thank you for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you that you are on your throne and you are in control and there is no God like you. You are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. You are our shelter in the storm and you are our strength and our refuge. You are mighty and magnificent and powerful and uh, miraculous God but you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness according to your truths you are loving and caring and kind and compassionate and forgiving you are faithful you are trustworthy you are patient God you want none to perish thank you for loving us thank you for calling us as your children we love you with our whole heart our soul our mind and our strength God, we pray for the lost. We just pray, God, <clears throat> that you would open their eyes and their ears and their hearts to the truth, God, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so that they would be saved. We pray for the prodigals, God. We pray for them to remember the relationship that they once had to return and to repent and to be reconciled. God, we just lift up all these things these many things that are going on. And God, we just pray that you would be with the people that have lost loved ones in tragedy and senseless tragedies and just so many things. Every day there is something. In the bigger cities, every day there is something. And uh, even in the rural areas, God, we just pray for all these people that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength, God. If they were injured, God, that you would heal their bodies. We pray, God, that their needs would be met by the hands and feet of Jesus and the loving compassion of Jesus. We would pray for all the sick, God. We just pray that you would heal their bodies, that you would give them strength. And we pray for people that have lost loved ones, either from disease or just instantly or even in car accidents, God, we just pray that you would be with these people, that they would feel your presence, and that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength. And we just pray for a Jesus movement that cannot be stopped, God. 
We pray for your truths to rule above all the lies that we hear. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alright. Well, it got a little warm here. Alright, well let's read Psalms. Let's dive into Psalms some more. I was thinking today, I want to do more of a schedule. I want to do like Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays Psalms, and then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I kind of just want to do some free lessons or some free scripture or maybe um, a Bible study or something. Um, I want to continue, I want to finish Psalms because I like it so well. And I want to finish it since I started it. And uh, we may start going three at a time, especially when they're short. Because some of these are really, really short. But I think 74 and 75 is going to be long enough. And so this is a plea for relief from oppressors. Uh, a contemplation of Asaph. So we had a psalm of Asaph. So this is a contemplation of Asaph. O oh God, why have you cast us off forever? Why does your anger smoke against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your congregation, which you have purchased of old, the tribe of your inheritance, which you have redeemed, the Mount Zion where you have dwelt. Lift up your feet to the perpetual desolations. The enemy has damaged everything in the sanctuary. Your enemies roar in the midst of your meeting place. They set up their banners for signs. They seem like men who lift up axes among the thick trees, and now they break down its carved work all at once. With axes and hammers they have set fire to your sanctuary. They have defiled the dwelling place of your name to the ground. They set in their hearts, let us destroy them altogether. They have burned up all the meeting places of God in the land. We do not see our signs. There is no longer any prophet, nor is there any among us who knows how long, O oh God, how long will the adversary reproach? Will the enemy blaspheme your name forever? Why do you withdraw your hand, even your right hand? Take it out of your bosom and destroy them. For God is my king from of old. Working salvation in the midst of the earth, you divided the sea by your strength. You broke the heads of the sea serpents in the waters. You broke the heads of Leviathan in pieces and gave him his food to the people inhabiting the wilderness. You broke open the fountain and the flood. You dried up mighty rivers. The day is yours, the night also is yours. You have prepared the light and the sun. You have set all the borders of the earth. You have made summer and winter. Remember this, that the enemy has reproached, O Lord, and that a foolish people has blasphemed your name. O do not deliver the life of your turtle dove to the wild beast. Do not forget the life of your poor forever. Have respect to the covenant, for the dark places of the earth are full of the haunts of cruelty. Oh, do not let the oppressed return ashamed. Let the poor and needy praise your name. Arise, O oh God, plead your own cause. Remember how the foolish man reproaches you daily. Do not forget the voice of your enemies. The tumult of those who rise up against you increases continually. So let's read what the study part says of that. While I was reading it, I was thinking of the blasphemy that goes on every day in our world against God. How they make fun of God. How they say there is no God. How they say that 
we just are, that we weren't created by God. That's kind of what I was thinking of as I read that. Let's see what the study part says. It says, God's people felt rejected and punished because God's sanctuary had been destroyed. The psalmist, the psalm is probably framed immediately following the destruction of Jerusalem by the Babylonians in 586 B.C. Israel did not believe that God would ever allow Jerusalem or the temple to be destroyed. They claimed that the presence of the temple in itself ensured them of protection from their enemies. However, the prophet Jeremiah, among others, had warned the people of Jerusalem's pending destruction if the people did not repent of their evil ways and turn to God. Because God's people failed to repent, destruction came upon them. You know, I think that's what we're facing in this country. We have... <coughs> We have a lot of unrepentant hearts. We have a lot of people that think that they're better than God and that they don't have to repent, that they can live in whatever sin they choose to live in and God is love and it's okay with Him. Well, God is love and God does love and God created all of us, but God hates sin and it is an abomination to Him. And even the smallest sin God hates and the biggest sin to him are all the same. So even though he is love and he loves us, he does not love our sin. And um, some people are going to find out they're either going to have to be humbled um, or they're just going to find out that they need God. Okay, so the next one is Thanksgiving for God's righteous judgment to the chief musician set to do not destroy the psalm of Asaph, a song. So this is kind of a song. A lot of psalms are songs. They were praise and worship for God. We give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks for your wondrous works. Declare that your name is near. When I choose the proper time, I will judge uprightly. The earth and all its inhabitants are dissolved. I set up its pillars firmly. I said to the boastful, do not deal boastfully. And to the wicked, do not lift up the horn. Do not lift up your horn on high. Do not speak with a stiff neck. For exaltation comes neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He puts down one and exalts another. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red. It is fully mixed, and he pours it out. Surely its dregs shall all the wicked of the earth drain and drink down. But I will declare forever, I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked I will cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. So a thanksgiving in talking about God's righteous judgment. Because God's righteous judgment is coming. And God created us. And he has the right to judge us also. So God's righteous judgment. That God alone can judge rightly and fairly is the theme of the psalm. He alone knows our hearts and all the circumstances, and thus he alone can judge correctly. This psalm warns against judging others. So it's not our job to be the judge. It is God's job. Because like I said last night, we don't know. We don't know people's hearts and minds, but God does. And God is going to judge the unrighteousness. And we don't want to be on that side. We want to be on the side with God, with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit. We want to be on the right side of things and not on the wrong side. We want to walk uprightly with Jesus. We want to walk 
in the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And we must be saved. In order to do that, we must be saved by Jesus. No man can save a soul, but Jesus can save every soul. So I'm going to do a salvation message. How do I want to do it? Hmm. On my list is cleaning off my desk and organizing it again. Yet again. Let's do this. I like this. Oh, I like that too, but let's do this. I'm not very good at this. But I like this message that makes a cross. It's, it's numbered too. I should be pretty good at it because it is numbered. Okay. I think this is the first page. I'll read it to you because it's probably hard to see. Just all kinds of struggles. All kinds of struggles that we have in life. Loneliness, guilt, suicide, sex, stress, life after death, purpose in life, AIDS, abortion, drugs, and there is an answer to all that. God loves you and has a great plan for your life. He created you for a purpose to have a personal relationship with Him. Genesis 1.27 my son and I read the creation story today. We just finished. We finished Jesus is coming yesterday. And so we're starting back over at the creation story. So it was just, it was neat to read that today. It was really short because it was kids' version. But, uh, yeah, God created everything that we see. He wants you to experience a full, abundant life. Right here on earth, Jesus said, My purpose is to give life in all its fullness. John 10.10 10. But because of sin in your life, you are separated from God. We are all sinners. Romans 3.23 The price for sin is death. Romans 6.23 Eternal separation from God. Your sins have cut you off from God. So that's this part that I've been reading. <laughs> so crazy. Not what I'm telling you, but just the way that it's hard to tilt things straight and get them in front of the camera. Because my camera... <laughs> One is facing one way and one is the other way. Okay. God and man. Sin separates man from God, but there is hope. So in the center. So funny. All right, over this way. Sin separates God. No. God. From man. And sin is in the middle. Okay. Now let me see if I can find four. There we are. The price is already paid. God showed this great, showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners Romans 5, 8, right here in the, in the center, Jesus, on the cross. That's 4, 5 is, it's free, it's free, it's free. Eternal salvation is a free gift, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. 
You can't be saved by good works, Bible knowledge, morality, religion. You can't earn your way to heaven. There is only one way. And that is six. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer, the only answer. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. So seven is, it's up to you. You must decide for yourself if you are willing to turn from your sins and ask Jesus into your heart. So you're at a crossroads. And you must decide. Everyone must decide. You can keep putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. Sooner or later, you're going to have to decide. Unless you wait until after the rapture and then the Antichrist will force you to make a decision. So we either receive Christ or we reject Christ. And not to decide is to decide to reject him. So this is the prayer. It's very short. Jesus, I ask you into my heart to be my Savior and Lord. Forgive my sins and give me the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So once you ask Jesus into your life, you can know that you have eternal life. 1 John 5, 11 through 12. John 10, 28 through 9. So it is important that you be baptized and get involved in a local church. Get help from an older believer. Spend time daily in prayer and Bible reading and share with others what Jesus has done for you. So in the Bible reading, I would start in Matthew. But if you did accept Jesus as your Savior, then please put your name in the comments because I want to pray for you. I started a typed prayer list today that I can add to on my computer. And I would really like to be able to pray for whoever comes, just put your name in. If you come and watch this, even if you come for just a few minutes, uh, put your name in there so I can pray for you. And you might say, well, you don't know what my problems are. Well, it doesn't matter. Because God knows. And He knows things that you don't even know about your problems. And God is the one that knows all hearts in your situation. And he knows all the details, and he knows all the solutions, and he knows all the outcomes. So that is most important. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that is most important. Hi, Ashton. How are you? My friend Ashton is here tonight. Did you have a good Christmas, Ashton? Ashton's in our youth group. Are you missing youth tonight? Do you miss me tonight? <laughs> uh, I give him a hard time. <laughs> yes, you had a good Christmas, and yes, you miss me terribly, I know. <laughs> I miss y'all too. We'll see y'all next Wednesday. We will, I don't know what we'll be doing, but we'll be doing something. So, anyway, as I was saying, um, start reading the Bible in Matthew. So, learn more about Jesus, because Jesus is the one that you invited into your life. And like I said, just put your name here. I want to pray for you. I'm going to add people's names to my list 
every day or once a week, I'm going to go through and add people's names and pray for them because God knows everything that's going on in your life. And He has, He already knows the outcomes. It's just amazing. He created everything and He created everybody and He wants everybody to accept His Son as their Savior. Oh, thank you, Ashton. Ashton's giving me thumbs up and hearts. Thank you. That's so sweet. Usually I don't get any comments. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Alright. Well, I am going to... Aw. So sweet. Now he's sending hearts up. I love that. I wish I could respond, but I don't have any way. My phone is way over there. I moved my phone away from me. So anyway, I am going to get off of here. And uh, sorry I was late tonight. But I'm going to give you a blessing from God. And if you have any comments about the scriptures tonight, I know it talked about mostly unrighteousness and righteousness, but that I'm seeing that that is a lot of what Psalms is about, is about unrighteousness and righteousness and enemies and trusting God. So we all need to trust God. So this is a blessing from God. In Numbers 6, 24 through 26, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So we all need some peace. Hey, Ashton, do you have any prayer requests? I'm fixing to pray. Is there anything you need to pray for? I know y'all aren't doing sports right now because y'all are out of school. I'm going to pray for you anyway. God knows what's going on in your life, okay? Oh no. Can I pray for you anyway? I'll pray for you anyway. God, we just come to you and we just thank you for all the many things that you do for us. God, I just thank you for Ashton and I just lift him up to you. I just pray that you would draw him closer and closer to you every day, God, that he would seek your word and uh, that he would just seek you daily. And I pray for his family. He has a precious family, precious brothers precious mom and dad and uh, sister. God, I just pray for blessings for their family, for protection and provision. And God, I just pray that they would, uh, that you would guide them. I pray for all my friends, God, and all my family members. I just pray for protection and provision and blessings for them. I pray that you would guide them also. I just pray, God, for the people that are sick, like Miss Jennifer. I just pray, God, that you would heal her body. And Dalton, too, I pray for them. I pray that you would give them strength. I thank you that Evan and Summer are well now. And uh, I just uh, look forward to next Wednesday and hanging out with the youth again. And God, just hearing about some of the fun things that they did over the Christmas holidays. We just praise you for all that you do. We pray that you would give us the boldness, God, to go out and share your truth and share the gospel of Jesus with others, that you would help us to shine the light of Jesus wherever we go. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, Ashton. I hope I didn't make you mad praying for you anyway and praying for your family. But I just felt like... Uh, since you came, that I wanted to do that. 
So I am going to get off of here. So I hope y'all have an awesome rest of your night, an awesome tomorrow, and um, God bless you all abundantly, and much love, and cyber hugs, till I see you again. Good night. Good night, Ashton.